have the x value, what else do you need? Yeah, so let's actually find the y value. We need the y value. To, a point is two things. Sure, why not? f of 2 is equal to 4 times the square root of 4 minus 6e to the 0. So that's going to be 8 minus 6, which is what? So the point is 2, 2. So now what do we need? We need the slope. Exactly. So to find the slope, what do we need to find first? The derivative. So f prime of x. You do the diff... Guys, back chatter. Stop. We differentiate this. It's going to be 4 times... It's going to be 4 times what? 1 half 2x to the what power? Negative a half, correct. Times what? 2 because of the chain rule. Exactly. You have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. And then you're subtracting 6e to the 2 minus x times what? The derivative of what? The derivative of what? I'll just one more step. The derivative of? Of 2 minus x, the thing up top. The derivative of what's up top. You multiply. You're plugging in 2 minus x into there. So if we simplify this, you end up with 4 times 2x to the what power? Negative 1 half. Uh, minus 6e to the 2 minus x times what? Wait, times what? The 2 canceled with that right there. Negative 1. Yes, negative 1. So if we go a little further, we end up with 4 times 1 over the square root of what? 2x minus, oh, it turns into plus 6e to the 2 minus x. So that's our derivative. What do we plug into there? Two. F of, f prime of 2. So that's going to be 4. I don't know why that copy thing is there. 1 over the square root of 4 plus 6e to the 0. So we end up with 4 times 1 half plus 6. So that's 4 times 13 over 2. So that's equal to what? 26. So that's the slope of the line. We have the slope. And what was the point? 2, 2. So what's the equation going to be? y minus? y minus is equal to? Uh-huh. Yep, all done. That's it. Go ahead. Increasing when what is true? When the, the derivative is positive. And it's decreasing when? The derivative is negative. So what do we need to find? The derivative. So v prime of z is going to be, we have, what rule do we have to use? We're going to use the product rule. We're going to use the chain rule. We're going to use the chain rule inside of it. So it's two functions. We have our first function and our second function. First function and, sorry, that didn't mean to be so skinny. First function and second function, like that. There's the first one, and here's the second one right there. Yes? Yeah. Correct. Yes. I'm just calling it one and two. So, because basically, actually, it's anywhere you can put a parenthesis, honestly. You can put a parenthesis here. Does it change anything? No, it doesn't. Okay, so it's going to be the derivative of the first, which is 4z to the third, times the untouched second function, plus the first function times the derivative of the second. Can someone tell me the derivative of the second? Raise your hand and tell me what it is. Hovey. Um, 3. Nope. 16. Nope. Oh, 3. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong number. 3. You're right. 3 what? Yep. 2z. 2z minus 8 to the? Second. Times what? Two. 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 Yes, correct. Oh, nice now, our overall goal is to find out when it's positive and negative. So what are we really looking for? Setting equal to zero. If you ever get lost in this class, you set, you take the, like, it doesn't even matter the topic. If you get lost and you have a function and you have no idea whatsoever what to do, take the derivative, set it equal to zero. You might get somewhere. So if I just asked you for the derivative, this is the derivative. But we need to go further than that. We need to do some analyses with the derivative. So we're taking this thing, 4z cubed times 2z minus 8 cubed plus z to the fourth times, what, 6 times 2z minus 8, what? Squared equals what? Zero. What can we factor out? So there's a term here and there's a term here. I'm sorry about that copy thing. Yeah, I'm sorry. You can't see it. Factor what? How about 2z minus 8? 2z minus 8 to the what power? Squared. To the second. What's going to be left? 4z cubed times what? 2z minus 8 plus 6z to the equals 0. Do you agree with that? Yeah, so now we simplify. So we have 2z minus 8 squared times 
What can we factor? What can we actually factor more about? What can we put on the outside? We could factor out a z to the what? Third. And we could also factor out a 2, right? Leaving us with 2 times 2z minus 8 plus what? If we factor out a 2z cubed, you're left with 3z. Like this, correct? Is that correct? So we have 2z cubed times 2, and I'll scroll down. I'm sorry about that little copy floating thing. Just, I don't know. There's just some OS error. Times what? 4z plus 3z. So we have 2z cubed times 2z minus 8 squared times 7z minus equals 0. You want the factored form because you're trying to find out where it equals 0. You factor things. You have a product of things. So if you have three things multiplied together here, what are the three things that make it equal to 0? Zero? 0. Yeah, so let's just all write the correlating values. You have 0, 4, and 16 over 7, right? So you have 0, 16 over 7, and 4. Now, how many regions are we concerned with here? There's one region. How many other regions are there? Second, yep, three other regions, exactly. There's this interval or region. Yeah, you can say interval, that's fine. Interval would be better, you're right. And this one. Now, here's the thing. Why am I only looking at those regions? Why can't there be multiple colors in there? Because each region, because what? It can't cross again. Those are the only three places it's going to cross. So can it cross anywhere else? No, it can't cross anywhere else. It cannot cross anywhere else. Do you agree with that? So what do we do for each of those reasons? What do we have to test? Figure out if they're yeah, so this is x, and we're checking whether the, the derivative, and it's not f, right? What did they call this? V of z, right? I think. Was it v of z? Yeah. V of z, OK. V of z, play ultimate. OK, so <laughs> we're just looking. Do we care about the actual value of the derivative? No, we just care about the sine of the derivative, the sine of the derivative, right? So this is the derivative right here. We just factored it. So we're really interested in the sine. So uh, how about we plug in, what's the number down here? Negative 1, right? So one thing you can do is this. Let me just show you an easy way to do this. You have three things multiplied together. 2z cubed, 2z minus 8 squared, 7z minus 16, like this. And that doesn't really look like a 7, I'm sorry. And you're looking at the... This is, we're going to write this, this column will be the product right here. What value do you want to plug in first? Negative 1, right? Well, this will be negative, right? This will always be positive. Plug in negative 1, this is going to be what? Definitely negative. If you multiply those together, what are you going to get? No, because there's two positives. So this is going to be positive. This region right here is positive. Put it right there. That's great. Let me get rid of that. Um, and then, so we've done the green one. Let's do the yellow one. What's a nice number in the yellow region? One. I could do it in the yellow, yeah. So, uh, so this is the, hold on, let me just color this. That's a good idea. So we do one right here. So we try one, uh, plug in one, we get a positive, right? The next one is always positive, and this is going to be? Negative. Negative. So what's it going to be? Negative. So this one is negative. So then we want, what's another one? A three. I like, let's do two instead. It's, all, it's really not going to matter too much. Two is, oh, two is too small. You're right. It has to be three. It has to be three. Good call. So we do this one. Um, we plug it in, and what do we get? We get positive. We get, it's always positive. And what do we get here? Positive. So it's going to be? Positive. So three, that's going to be positive. And at four, what do we plug in? Plug in four, sorry. Let's plug in what? Five. So what color was five? Five was blue. So it's gonna be it's gonna be positive. Positive. Positive and positive. So here we go. You make this chart. This is really helpful because you don't need to know the actual values. So the question now is, where is this? Increasing. Can someone tell me very clearly where it's increasing? Someone raise their hand and tell me one place it's increasing. Yeah. Um, from negative infinity yep. to zero. Yep. Union what? Union, uh, 17, 16 over 7, 16 over 7 comma, 4. four. Ah, careful. Is it increasing at 4? Oh, no, it's, it's okay. not. Four. So union 4 infinity. infinity. That's really important because this is not including 4, right? You would not get full credit for the answer point 
if you wrote just from 16 over 7 to infinity. People miss that all the time. We know that the derivative is 0 at 4. So is it increasing at 4? No. So this is where it's increasing. It's 0. So where is it decreasing? 0, 16 over 7. Yeah, there it is. Wait, Very good. So does that mean that it's so what does that equal? That equals negative 1 times 1 over sine x times cosine x over sine x. So that's equal to negative. What's 1 over sine? 1 over sine cosecant. cosecant x. And what is cosine over sine? Cotangent x. There it is. So what's the derivative of cosecant? Negative cosecant cotangent. So this was with the quotient rule. Is there another way you could do this? Yes. There's a way you could do it with the chain rule. You ready? So we know that we're trying to do ddx of cosecant x. Well, that's ddx of 1 over what? Sine x, which is the same thing as ddx of sine to the what power? Negative 1. So using the power and the chain rule, Sorry, power and chain rule. When you do the derivative, that's going to be, you drop the negative 1 down, you keep the sine the same, you make it to the negative what? 2, and then what do you kick out? The derivative of sine, which is cosine. What does that equal? The exact same thing. The first thing I will tell you is that the derivatives of all the trig functions that begin with c are negative. There's a negative sign on the outside. Any of the trig functions that begin with C, when you take the derivative, the derivative of cotangent is going to have a negative sign. Cosecant, negative sign. And what's the third? Cosine. Cosine. Because the derivative of cosine is negative sign. One, that's just one of the many things to remember. There's one of them. So this is with the power of chain rule. Do you get the same exact thing? Yes. Get the same exact thing. <laughs>